Welcome to New Release Review, part of the Movie Friends podcast. My name is Seth. Today we're talking about The Zone of Interest from 2023, directed by Jonathan Glazer. We will be discussing spoilers throughout this episode, so if you haven't seen Zone of Interest, please turn this off, go watch the movie, and then come back and listen. Today I'm joined by two guests, one you may be familiar with if you listen to the show. It's my wife, Jean Marie. Hello, Jean Marie. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And I'm also joined today by Scott Cole. He is a fellow member of the Scheiss International Film Club. He is a film lover, and he is a writer for Music City Drive-In down in Nashville. Scott, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me, y'all. Thanks for joining. Yeah, very excited to uh, finally have you on the show and talk about this movie. And what a movie. Yeah, it's a doozy. <laughs> It's a dude. So you ended up seeing this twice, right? I did. I saw it the first time in like a packed house. Very shortly, I'll explain. Uh, a, a girl sitting two seats away from me was on her phone constantly, and it was really distracting. And I didn't say anything. E- I probably should have. Uh, yeah. But it. I didn't really. I still was I had the experience I had. But um, then when you said you we were going to maybe talk about this, I was like, I feel like I need to see it again because I feel like I need a. I don't know. I'm not sure what made me want to see it again, but. I, maybe I just wanted a better experience of it. Yeah. And so I did. And I had kind of the same experience, actually. So it didn't really solve problems. Got it. I, I think I still feel the exact same way about the movie that I did. Got it. Yeah. So, but I, I did. The one different thing I did was I booked it out when the when that final score started during the credits, because that thing is scary. Yeah. <laughs> I, I sat through it the first time and I ran after the second. I was like, I'm not yeah. sitting through this thing again, because that score is terrifying yeah. at the end. <laughs> Yes. It's amazing. Yeah, it's almost, uh, it makes you feel a little ill. Yeah. The opening um, with the title, it holds on the title for so like three long. three minutes. Or so. It's so yeah. long. Yeah. yeah. It's a really yeah. long. For a minute, I thought maybe there was a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did too. And it was yeah. stuck. And like, they do this thing that I couldn't quite put my finger on, but it's like, if you focus on specific letters, it's almost like they're moving forward and backward, Mm -hmm. like a little trick to make you feel ill. Like woozy, yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. It was very, very interesting. It reminded me of um, the opening to Tar, where they open with the credits. Right. Yeah. And there was something about the way that the credits were presented and paced and paired with the music of Tar that was like almost hypnotic. Like I've seen a lot of credits in my day and I felt like I was honed in on what was happening. And they did the same thing with this one, just with the title card. Yeah. Kind of feels so, like a dare. Like you sure you want to do that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> like <absolutely>. a challenge. <laughs> and then the film itself visually is not very challenging right audibly yes like Mm -hmm. the sound in this i don't know i know that this is nominated for best picture i don't know if this was nominated for sound design or not it was yeah yeah i would be very surprised if this does not win i kind of think oppenheimer will but i think it should win i'll put it that way yeah 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 yeah. so just kind of initial thoughts from you guys i guess we'll go gene marie first what were your kind of initial takeaways from seeing the movie um i think i gave it like five stars so i i was really into it i know some people have um their critiques about it but um i think i know this is not everyone but i think if you're either if from a certain you're a certain age or i don't know if you had a certain upbringing you know a lot about the holocaust and you've seen all the movies um, I know I have, so like I know so many details. I've seen so many documentaries and movies about it. So um, I feel like there's not much information you could have given me in this movie about that historical event that I didn't know already. Um, but I just thought it was powerful in what it didn't show. Um, I was impressed by um, the depiction of the banality of their lives and you hear a lot of people reviewing it talking about the banality of evil so that was 
that was very powerful to me. Yeah, it just it, it, it wasn't in your face, any of the violence, but it was still one of the most intense movies about the Holocaust that I've seen. Um, and yeah, this whole movie made me physically ill, just having the knowledge of what's going on just over the wall and hearing it to the score and just the ordinary lives that these people are living while horrible things are happening just on the other side of the wall. Um, I thought it was very powerful. That's probably the word I would use to describe it. Scott, how about you? Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I, I think I ended up at four out of five stars. Um, I would say I really admire the movie in a way. Like I haven't really been a huge Jonathan Glazer. I didn't really like Under the Skin that much. Um, I didn't see it till recently, but um, I liked this. I thought this worked better for me. Uh, I thought it was interesting, like you were saying, like the banality of evil, like trying to show that which I think runs the risk of the movie becoming banal itself. But in this case, mm. uh, I think the way I feel about it is like the, I think the spell that the movie casts on me was a little bit broken when he leaves and goes yeah. to the, because then it becomes like kind of a lot of meetings and bureaucracy. Yeah. And I, I, was, I, I kind of was a little bit not sure why that's the direction it went in the last, that's like the last 20 minutes. But, um, but the, uh, everything up to that for me was very effective, very upsetting, basically about how easy it is to become comfortable with evil, um, which is shown in different ways. Obviously, the family is so in it that they don't even – it's weird how they show them being uh, – like, like for example, the main guy, Hess, he's like really sweet to that horse and his dog. Mm, he's like – Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just – they, and then, of course, they're all – they love their children and – all that stuff. And then you have obviously just what's going on feet away. And yeah, the sound design is horrifying. You're like constantly trying to understand what you're hearing. And then you realize it and the scene's over and you're like, Oh my God. Like, it's just, yeah, you do feel sick, but yeah, I thought it was really effective and did, did what it was trying to do very well. I have, yeah, like I said, minor quibbles with it, but nothing. Yeah. I think it, I think it finished number 11 on my best of the year list. So oh, wow. Inside my wow. top 10. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I I'm a fan of Jonathan Glazer and I think it was interesting to see him balance technique and style. And I think a lot of the negative reviews that I've seen, I think they wanted more style, mm -hmm. like maybe more substance. He's not pulling back on being a good filmmaker and using good techniques, but I don't know that you could critique this as a um, boring film. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of negative reviews for this, and a lot of people say that it's boring. A lot of people say, you know, nothing's really happening. How can you not show it? And what I said to Jimri after like a day, maybe, I was like, it's kind of a companion piece. Yeah to perhaps other Holocaust films where this is not trying to be the Holocaust film. You know, this is just part of what happened. And I kind of love the decision to focus on not just officers doing their jobs, but a family and how a family were witnessing, you know, young love where the boy is kissing behind the house and a birthday party and going to sleep playing on their drums almost every line of dialogue in the movie if you know about the holocaust is tinged towards what's happening yes in some way but the actions if you just if you changed the dialogue in this it, it, you would have no idea what this movie's about <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and i love that they do that because we have lived through several wars in our lifetime that we have been involved in as a country and that we have seen around the world and very few people stop their daily lives 
just because something horrible is going on. And some people were also complaining that this forces you to spend time with Nazis and like view them as normal people. But the truth is, is that most evil people are normal people Mm -hmm. just doing their jobs. You know, they believe in this ideology. The wife at one point mentions, she mentions someone that they knew who was Jewish and they, she says something like, Oh, well, who knows what they were actually yeah, doing? Yeah. You know, they're, they're Jewish ideas, right? So she's bought into this propaganda that all of the Jewish people that they've ever known were part of this. And so that's part of how she justifies what's happening. Right. They also talk about how they are living like the ideal German life. You know, Jean Marie mentioned to me, how like the whole thing where she says like we moved east, right? Yes. Yeah, we moved east and we're living off the land and this is you know the 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 dream that we've had since we were young people to like follow Hitler's directions and we finally have everything and now you're going to let it all get taken away from us. So, I'm obviously not a Nazi sympathizer uh at all, but I think if you can't see yourself and the little ways that we choose to ignore what's happening in the world so that we can provide for our families or so that we can live the life that we've wanted, you know, (laughs) because in order for them to actually step in and do something, they would have to give everything up. And very few people live their life that way. So the time for them to give up would have been a decade earlier. Right. Yeah. And, and they are moving east. Like they also just probably displaced a bunch of Polish people to be out there. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's it's very tough. And I'm not surprised that people have a hard time with it because you have to be able to hold two things in your head at once. Mm-hmm. And people are not always very good at doing that. Um, these people are evil. They are perpetrating evil and they're actively participating in it. And yet they're living a normal life. Yeah. Day in and day out. So major props to them for committing to that idea and seeing it through. And we see we see them be evil. Like all those people who are complaining, like, ah, they're just a nice family. I'm like, what are you kidding me? She's trying on a fur coat. Yeah. And the lift. They're talking about yeah. Yeah. Finding diamonds in the toothpaste Mm -hmm. and like laughing about it. These are not good. <laughs> They're not good people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think a critique I would have about it actually is Mrs. Haas. Um, sometimes I think she's a little too much. Like she didn't need to be so mean and aggressive at times um, to get the point across. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little too on the nose. Yeah. She would. Yes. Yeah, so, everyone else is like kind of mellowed down. Where every like everything that she does is like the most evil thing that you can think yeah. of. She's like, Oh, I'm the queen of Auschwitz. Yeah. Yeah. At that- the time that probably would have sounded pretty ordinary though. Like no one was like Auschwitz didn't sound the same as it does now. Right. It yeah. Like, oh. right. Yeah. Then it's like saying I'm the queen of any Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I feel like so there's individual lots of individual scenes in the movie and yeah, it's weird. Like half of them are just them doing normal family things. And then occasionally it'll swing you into something crazy. Like mm. when with, he's with the kids in the water yes. and he finds what I, I've seen it twice. And I think it's a jaw. I don't know what it yeah. is. He finds, yeah. he finds something and then he, they have to clean off the kids because they think the ashes are on the kids and right. um, stuff like that. Or when she, the way that she is, uh, well, really the craziest or the, the, most affecting thing is when the mom comes her mom because yeah she tries to take it and then she can't take it she she's yeah. trying to get a suntan she can smell what's happening she sees it at night the fire and stuff and she knows which is kind of a welcome scene in a way because you're like at least somebody is reacting to this at right. all right um, and then she's obviously super cold and the next day she throws a note in the furnace or whatever and says that horrible thing to the maid by the okay so here's this just a side thing are the people working in the house Jewish? Because she says they're not at one point, but I thought that was maybe a lie. There was some, it was a little bit of confusion there for me. They might be Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I saw a review say that um, 
the the young woman uh, that she talked about. She said the horrible thing too. Whatever yeah. she said, that um, that woman was a Jehovah's Witness, and I think they were persecuted um, in oh, Germany okay. as well. Okay. And at the beginning, um, there was like one of the organizations that came up on the screen was like JW was they produced the movie in some way uh, or they were mentioned at the beginning. So I maybe that's for Jehovah's Witness. That's interesting. But that's my guess. Well, I, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know that. that. So like the thing about it, about it's like the movie, I feel like uh, if you look at individual parts of it, I can I, I guess I see how people are critical of it. But I feel like it's one of those movies that's like more than the it sounds very trite, but more than the sum of its parts. I think of it yeah. like a top. Yeah. Like if you okay. if you spin a top. If this movie's a top, you have to spin it, and then you can see the stuff written on the sides of what the movie's about. Mm, but oh God. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, scene good, to good, scene, good. you're not going to make that connection always. It's just you have right. to have it. The repetition of it is what makes it work in that way for me. Right, um, right. Yeah, that's just kind of the way I think of movies like this. How they have to, they have to get going, and then you're like, you finally start to see what it's really trying to say. Mm-hmm. I was also going to say real quick, uh, I couldn't get on board with the thermal lighting or the thermal okay. uh, yeah. night images of that. I don't, I don't know why that, that stylistic choice wasn't for me, but I just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't crazy about it. Although I, I did like find the it style um, interesting that they showed another family, that girl, you know, hiding the apples or the workers and stuff. Like I thought it was interesting. They went outside the house for that to show a different house sort of in that one scene. But, um, and then obviously it's horrible later because when the little boy hears him out the window, Here's the guys fighting over the, one of the apples, and the guy says, "Drown him in the river." Like that's you know, yeah. it has a horrible payoff. <laughs> yeah, but right. Anyway, I just was curious what you guys thought of that scene <laughs> or those scenes. I just wasn't crazy about them. Um, I liked what was happening, but I didn't really like the thermal imaging. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting because when they first showed those scenes, I I thought, oh, is this like a dream or is this a some fantasy thing that's happening on the side yeah because at the beginning i didn't make the connection that she was even planting apples but by the end it it was evident that she was leaving apples and once i figured that out and noticed there were other things happening like you could see people walking down the road and the thermal Mm -hmm. imaging that she was yeah they sort of fake you out when they started because he's reading a story so you're like right it's gonna be the story yeah 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 i know right yeah that's what i thought Personally, I liked it because it just makes you feel strange and it makes you feel odd. And Mm -hmm. it definitely rips you out of like the mood that they're setting. Mm -hmm. And if you have found yourself kind of lulled into just watching what's happening, it just kind of like jerks you awake Mm -hmm. a little bit. And when you realize like, oh, like someone is trying to help them but it's it's at nighttime it's this other person we can't tell who the person is and i saw several uh articles and reviews kind of unsure of like is this one of the workers from the house is this someone just from town and while i don't think that this is a movie that needs to give us hope it just kind of i don't know it just kind of jerks you out of whatever mood this is set for you so i, I kind of liked it i was confused completely yeah <laughs> like, it's totally kind of the second viewing to feel like i understood what what those were mm-hmm. um and i do agree that I, I i admire it because i've never seen it before yeah it just yeah. wasn't my cup of tea but that's not it doesn't mean it's bad or wrong it just yeah <laughs> right yeah how did you feel about the ending when we see rudolph he vomits and then kind of like looks down the hallway and like sees into the future. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what happens, but that's what I'm talking about. No, how I've did you guys describe that way? How did you guys feel about that? I I didn't love it. Um, mm-hmm. I sound like I'm being really negative about a movie I like, but uh, I don't know why I felt like the the flash forward to the to the present to the you know the the workers cleaning Auschwitz, basically the site. Uh, I feel like it was a little bit too handholdy for me, like a little bit too mm. on the nose, maybe like it just seemed weird. Cause like 
like I said, my previous glazer experience was under the skin. He doesn't help you at all. And under the skin, in my opinion, he right. doesn't give you anything. Right. He's just like, you figure this out, whatever you want. I felt like it was a little bit dry underlining stuff that I, I, and are we supposed to think that his dry heaves and looking in the future is, Oh, finally he's feeling something about it. I just, it seemed weird to me and kind of not emotionally truthful for that character. So I don't know. It just mm. didn't feel it didn't feel right to me, although I didn't hate it. I just, uh, I was surprised that's the way he went with it. Yeah. Um, it is haunting and it's effective. It's not a bad ending in any way. I just, I was surprised that's the way it went. Right, right, right. Yeah. I see what you're saying about it being so handholdy. And I, I think maybe, I don't know if there's different interpretations about why he was sick. I saw someone say it was because he was drunk. I don't know, but I thought I just kept thinking of all of the smoke and things that were in the air that they had been inhaling back at the house Mm -hmm. and how it was making people sick and coughing. And it just made me think that even though they're the ones uh, perpetrating this evil, it's not good for you to be an evil person right (laughs) it's not good for your soul (laughs) i think it was making him sick um maybe literally because he had inhaled all of that or maybe it's just a representation of that sickness um that's good i didn't think about that i was like and i don't know yeah i didn't think he was really seeing the future but it it just made me think everything that he worked so hard to achieve is now just this museum um, that people uh, people are not admiring what he's done at all, um, and and it also makes me think of um, like it's another mundane scene just watching the people clean up and maintain the museum, and it kind of parallels the family life. Um, of, of them living next door to Auschwitz um, and them going about their mundane daily lives. And I almost wonder if um, the, 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 the cleaners in the future, they're not at all evil or <laughs> doing anything bad. They're doing their jobs. But <laughs> I wonder if this has also just become kind of routine for them, cleaning it up and maintaining the space. Yeah. Yeah, that was my biggest takeaway from that. It was kind of like this horrible realization kind of like came over me as I watched them washing all the windows and sweeping and vacuuming. It was like, uh, again, nothing bad about these people who are doing this and helping to preserve the museum there. But I was like, for him, this was his job. This was his career. And Auschwitz now is still a job for some people. And it can mean a lot, of course, to people who had family through there. It can mean a lot to anybody who is part of anyone, whether it was Jewish people, anyone who was executed, you know, murdered there. But the people who are going through the persecution and who are being killed they're the ones who it, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can explain it. Like it just, yeah, I just, I had a horrible, <laughs> I just had a horrible realization of like, like, Oh my God, like it's still just a place. Yeah. And we can't comprehend. We can't. Yeah. We can't we did and understand as much as we want to remember and understand eventually understanding just becomes day in and day out normalcy. And it's like, it was very, that was probably the most upsetting scene to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know what you hear and what you're seeing, um, the, the part in the water was also very like when you see that cloud coming through the water, I was just like, Oh my God. I like, I know, what that is you know i know what's mm-hmm. happening but there's something about seeing all the piles of the belongings in a very neutral but like normalized way that was like oh man this 
this type of human behavior should not be normalized. Mm -hmm. And yet here we are. And yeah. How did you guys feel about the performances from the two leads? So the guy, Ru Rudolph, uh, I, uh, I should have looked up his name. Uh, somebody said, I saw somebody say he looks like Macklemore and I can't stop. Oh of that. man. He looks a lot like Macklemore. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I thought he was good. He was, uh, I haven't, I don't think I've seen him in anything that I can remember, but I thought he was really good. Um, yeah. Like, um, kind of like what G Marie was saying, like I, I was at first, I thought maybe that's interesting the theory about him being sick. I thought maybe he was playing like he had an ulcer cause he seems really stressed out the whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even like in the scene where he, uh, he's telling her that they have to move. Um, the way the things he's saying to her, you can tell like he feels like irritated and emasculate. He's like, "What? What? You want me to go to Hitler? What should I do?" You know, like right. he's like, yeah, "Why right. don't you?" Um, but right, I thought he did a good job at playing like, yeah, the insecurity of that guy, and uh, he. I feels like he feels like he's got such a tenuous grasp on everything. He's just trying to hang on. Meanwhile, though, his reputation is he's the he's killing more than anyone else. And he's the head, right. you know, he's doing such a good job. He's they're having those meetings about the the uh, speeding up the progress of the yeah. Yeah, incineration or whatever. Um, so I thought he was excellent. I thought that she was great. And I think that it's helping her Oscar season wise that she has this and anatomy of a fall at the same time, because she's great in anatomy of a fall, but it's a totally different type of person. And a totally different. it's like she, they, she has this year to showcase like her talent, how good uh, she yeah. is. Uh, I think that having the two roles is really helping her in like the best actress, even though she didn't get on there for this, which she could have, but um, I thought she was great and uh, very upsetting. And you, there was one part uh, it's when she says that thing. I was just like, I don't think I've ever wanted to like jump through a screen as much <laughs> and just like <laughs> i don't she was so awful i was like oh okay. which part was it what, what did she i say? didn't want to i wanted the the maid to like hit her mm -hmm. in the face with the coffee pot or oh whatever. yeah pot. yeah <laughs> yeah it was she's just awful and uh I'm trying did she i guess uh oh there was one interesting scene at the end when they they had their final conversation. He's, you know, I was at this party. I got, um, he's like bragging about, he, I think he's sort of bragging about people he's killed or he says the thing about, I couldn't focus on the party. I was too busy thinking how I was going to gas everyone in the room. Yes. And she yes. kind of doesn't want to hear it at that point. She's like, all right, yes. we'll talk later. Like I, it's almost like, I wonder if they're trying to signal that she's kind of over it <laughs> now. Yeah. Like yeah. has she gotten to that point where she's over it? I don't know, but yeah, they both do a good job of, exactly what the movie is trying to do, which is show how, uh, yeah, I guess evil can sort of seep in to your everyday life if you're not careful and you can, which is why I think the movie is being made right now. Somebody I yeah. talked to was complaining, like, I don't want to see another Holocaust movie. I was like, well, I think it's being made this way right now for a reason, because they're trying to draw parallels between what's going on now. Right, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I this think, is like yeah, exactly. Nineteen thirties Germany. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's like I don't think this movie would have been made this way fifteen years ago. I think right. Glazer has a very specific point to it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and he so, said, and he said that too. He yeah. was like, he's like, this applies now. It applies, you know. And sadly, it applies many times. You know, I mean, they're they're acting like he is the you know. Uh, head architect of the new york city subway system or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's how they're acting and oh well you should have this leverage and you should have this pull and you know what you've done has but you know his business is like murder not mass transit you know yeah. and so yeah it's when when he said that line he was like yeah i couldn't concentrate i was just thinking about how i would go about gassing everyone in the room yeah it's it's very 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 off-putting but also after having been with these people for almost two hours it's more off-putting yeah. <laughs> because it's like wait this is the movie where you don't talk like that you're you know what i mean you're not the uh stereotypical evil nazi with the slick back hair and you know right yeah so it was, it was like this 
deeper level of like, oh my God, this guy is like evil, evil, evil. And Mm -hmm. for just a second, you see it. And it's so understated. It's a phone call while his wife is like half awake, you know? Yeah. Well, compare that with earlier. He was talking on the phone with someone or, or writing a letter, maybe. I don't know. But he was concerned about the way uh, maybe some of the workers at Auschwitz were not workers, like the, the guards or soldiers or whatever, uh, were dealing with the lilacs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. They, mm-hmm. they were. Um, I, I don't know what they did, but he wanted them to be preserved and treated gently. Yeah. Well, he said there's a way to pull them that they don't bleed and the you know. Yeah. He's like, if you want to pull them, you can. But yeah, I mean, you know, in their in their That's minds, so they're sick. creating like the future of their country and the future of the world. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, hey, we're going to do this thing and, you know, hopefully history won't remember us. This guy probably thought that there were like statues coming. Yeah. That would be made of him. And Yeah. Jamie, how'd you feel about Sandra Huller? Oh, I'm just impressed that she speaks so many different languages. Mm-hmm. You know, German in this movie, and then, uh, well, English, French, English, and Did French. She speak another language. French, um, a little bit of anatomy, of all too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm impressed by that. It makes me feel like a stupid American. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, that was the question, right? How do we feel about her and her performance? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Um, sometimes, the character, like I said, was a little, it was a little too much. Like I, I know yeah, she didn't have to be so overtly mm. bad. Although now that I think about it, it makes, it reminds me of a documentary I saw about neo-Nazis and they interviewed um, like a white supremacist family in some remote area. And the wife said the most vile things mm. <laughs> to the interviewer who was not white. Maybe I forget what he was about. Yeah. But like, Oh my God, like you really sound like an evil Nazi. So yeah. sometimes the women, uh, they're pretty crazy. <laughs> so Glazer said that they basically set up not quite hidden cameras, but like cameras that were hidden from the other cameras and they would just let them run. Yes. And so he would instruct the actors like this kind of needs to happen in the scene. Uh, He said, especially with the children, anytime that any of the scenes with the kids, they just he he said that they took um, that they took like production techniques from reality TV. Because he wanted it to feel like you were watching reality TV where it's just a family in their house acting like they normally do. Yeah. That's interesting because that is so like almost like an outline, almost like why am I thinking of Christopher Guest? Like a Christopher Guest movie where they right. just have like an outline and just have goals they have to achieve. Uh, that's really effective though because it it does have that quality to it where you're just like scene to scene. You're just like, okay, this is just everyday life walking around tending the garden. And then it's like you suddenly get smacked in the face with something horrific like well if it's not the sound sometimes it's even the well that okay there's that one shot where they're like in the garden looking at the flowers it zooms in on like a rose Mm -hmm. the screams and sounds get really loud and then it just cuts to a blank red screen in silence for another 15 seconds and you're just really like it's pretty stunning. <laughs> you don't really know what to think sometimes in this movie. You're just like kind of shocked at that. And and then it goes right back to let's go inside. Let's talk. Let's have the kids playing. That yeah. older son was upsetting to me because it seems so much like he was going to be like following his dad's footsteps. Yeah. Oh, definitely. He definitely seemed yeah. very like kind of just cruel and like he didn't when care. He's looking at the know. teeth. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. yeah. The, actually. I had forgotten about the teeth. Yeah, the teeth. Yeah, he's he's screwed. <laughs> like, yeah. It's over for him. The younger boy maybe has a little bit of time to figure things out. But. So in real life, I think the wife, I know that Rudolf Haas was hanged at Auschwitz. Not yeah. too long after, after this. I don't think. Yeah, yeah pretty soon. But did I read that the wife actually died in America? In the 80s, yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. She moved here. She lived a long time. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> wow. Something about the sound design that for me personally was very, very true. Uh, so I used to work at a shooting range 
and I worked the, the, the shooting range was divided into two sides. One side was for trap and skeet, which are two games that you play with um, shotguns. If anybody out there is a Olympic sport follower. <laughs> um, and then the other side, which was pretty far away, like you'd have to drive there with your car or a golf cart. That was where they would set up targets for pistols and rifle shooting. And a shotgun is very loud, but a rifle is extremely loud. And when I first started working there, you know, I, I didn't grow up shooting guns. I didn't grow up around guns. This was just like a job. And I would just be walking in and then I'd hear a rifle go off and I would kind of like jump like it would startle me. And people would laugh at me because they're like, oh, yeah, you'll get used to it. And I thought to myself, how like yeah. I'll never get used to that. And guess what? I completely got used to it. And then a new kid would start and, you know, guns would be going off and he kind of freaked out and you'd say to him like, oh, you'll get used to it. Yeah. And so this family, especially the children, they're growing up next door. And throughout the whole movie, you are hearing gunshots going off pretty constantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, not constantly, but a lot more than you're a hearing lot, the screaming yeah. and other things like you're. Every you know, few minutes, a gunshot is going off, and nobody jumps, nobody moves. Right. It's just, it's just another sound, and it was also really sad to me that you know the adults they've grown up into this way of thinking. They're having to buy into propaganda and ideology yeah. to convince themselves that the people beyond the gate they're not humans, and so what's happening is acceptable right the kids they'll kids will accept whatever you tell them yeah and that's like the real danger and like tragedy of life is these kids they're you know not that they're uh, dumb but (laughs) these kids certainly don't have the same grasp on the ideology of nazism that their parents do yeah. yeah. for them. It's just normal. It's just everyday life. And that was also, I was like, Oh my God, that is just, it's disgusting. It's horrible. You know, it's, it's, it's horrifying. And I, I appreciated that they had that in there, that they show that, mm-hmm. um, that you can get used to anything Yeah, you can. Yeah. Through just through, um, exposure and repetition, anybody can get used to anything. So they have that one great wide shot where it's like the party and you see yeah. all the kids in the pool and you see the adults in there. And then in the background, you see the train coming in. Yeah. yeah. Presumably with oh, yeah. Right. Jews uh, for the, yeah. So it's like, it is a weird, yeah, that it's, it's a great shot in a movie, but it like makes you feel very hor- horrified. <laughs> You're just like, yeah. okay. Like I was saying, there's so many little things that are said and they're just said as like offhand remarks. Yeah. Like when the wife is talking about, Oh, the first thing that we did was install central heating because it gets so cold here in the winter. Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I started like keeping a list of all the little comments. Just so much. That are horrifying. If you think about it. Yeah. Just so much of what is said. Oh, I, I mean, even, even when the kid is cleaning off his boots, you know, there's blood running off of the bottom of the boots. Mm-hmm. Um, there's yeah. another comment about someone who was visiting and his wife fainted on the train. Fainted like, on oh, the train. it's so hot out. And like, if she fainted on the passenger train, imagine all the people crammed into cars. Right. Had, like some of them died on the way into Auschwitz. Right. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I, I, oh, you talked about this. I was going to say like the mom saying, I wonder if the lady I used to clean for is here. Right. Um, I lost an auction for her curtains or something. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then she said, Oh, she's probably doing weird Jewish stuff or whatever she said. I think it was Jewish stuff. Yeah. So, uh, but you are, sorry, you'd mentioned that one, but yeah, I didn't think about the cold or or either of those. I should have thought about that. Gosh, there's a lot to this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know. I, I'm not in the boat of like thinking that this is an all time great film. I, like I said, I think that this is a, just a companion piece to what has already been said and shown yeah. about the Holocaust, but it might hit people in a very different way. And 
it also kind of skirts the idea of like, well, what is ours to show of something that we have an experience? Mm-hmm. You know, we know all of the imagery and this movie could not be accused of using imagery to sell tickets or to tantalize yeah. or to entertain. It just kind of removes that whole part of the discussion of like the responsibility and like impact of art. So for that too, it's got a unique place in the canon of war films and films about the Holocaust. And yeah, like it seems very silly to be like, oh, you know, this is like you were saying, it's like number 11 for you. G Marie's rating at five stars. I don't know where all of that falls for me. Like, and I'm not criticizing either of you for saying those things. Like, I don't think that this is the best picture of the year. Mm-hmm. But what criteria am I using for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. You you can judge this movie by the same metrics that all other films are judged. I think I just don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. This movie's messed up and it's about messed up things. And it'll make you feel messed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's kind of where I'm coming, you know. Um, and yeah, I applaud Glazer for committing to it. And yeah, a few a few odd little things. Definitely. I uh, when he looks down that hallway at the end, I was like, this is 2001 when Dave is looking and seeing his yeah, older self, yeah. you know, and we're suddenly changing from one time period to another slowly. And mm-hmm. uh, so that was that was a little interesting. But but yeah, did you guys have any other thoughts on the movie that we didn't talk about? Well, I would say um, Go ahead. I agree with what you said about movies sort of being careful about the i guess the imagery of the holocaust they show like i i feel like i have a, a hang up sometimes where i feel like if a movie is going to be about the holocaust i need it to be something that is upsetting like and i feel like takes it very seriously like i feel like this movie a, a, a cheese that obviously schindler's list of cheese that but mm-hmm. there's a certain trend sometimes of like movies that almost try to make a little bit light of it. Like yeah. for me, life is beautiful. And Jojo rabbit are two movies people love that. I don't like, because yeah. I'm not saying every movie has to be Schindler's list, but I don't love that light. I don't, I, there's something about it that is eerie to me and I don't like it. It is. Yeah. It affects me negatively. Um, I think this movie definitely escapes that. I think it, it, by even by showing a different part of it, I don't think it's really, avoidant i think it's just trying to show you something you haven't seen before and i think it does get the same effect across of uh of just dread and making you feel what it yeah how horrible it it is so yeah yeah i think it works for exactly for like kind of like what you said it works for what it's trying to do i think it's very effective i don't know if it's one of the best movies of the year um but like just because it's a great movie but i just think it's different from other movies i've seen about the holocaust Mm -hmm. and i think it's one of the better movies about the holocaust and yeah just we see so many that are so graphic and in your face and and we should but we need to see this side of it as well yeah I will say when I said that it's number 11 on my list, I realize now how stupid and arbitrary that is because my number 10 is Bottoms. So I'm like, <laughs> how do you compare all these movies that come out in a year? There's no, yeah. there's nothing to like, what makes Bottoms a little better? I know. It, right. Yeah. Right. I hate those lists. They're so arbitrary, but like another day, it probably could be higher or lower. It's just, yeah. Right. I always struggle with year end lists because like you said, how do you compare this movie with other movies? And some something that Michelle and I say on the show because we rate each movie is like, what does it matter? Mm-hmm. What rating I give The Godfather two? You know what I mean. <laughs> and I, I will be very interested to rewatch this and see where this movie goes in the next ten years. Mm-hmm. Because, like on a personal level, I've seen individuals who are very very affected by it. And I've been pretty surprised at like the negative critical yeah. response. Like I just read an article, I think it was New York Times. Yeah. They called this Someone... vacuous. Yeah. And self-aggrandizing. Yeah. They said like hollow 
Hollow, yeah. Hollow. <laughs> so it'll about? be it'll be interesting to see kind of yeah uh, where this movie ends up. I feel like that's looking at it the wrong. I mean, I can. It's like if I look at it a certain way, I'm like, I can. I guess I could understand that argument, but I feel like that's not yeah. that's not giving your sympathies over to the filmmaker and yeah. watching the movie they're trying to show you. It's like yeah. You're not seeing the the top. I'm gonna go back to my top reference. Right. Yeah. I love that. That that's a great that's a great example. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you sit through this movie, and you know, hey, uh, on this show, we're not about making fun of people, but I think if you sit through this movie and think that it's about sympathizing with Nazis, like you're being purposefully stupid. Yeah. You're not paying attention to what this. The, these people are monsters, mm-hmm. and maybe more chilling than the Nazis that we've seen shooting people down. Yeah. It's like they're having tea, yeah. you know, like, and it starts that whole thing about Auschwitz. why does showing it, like, why does just showing it mean that right. that's when it's the word I'm looking for. It's like, yeah, it, just cause you show them living their lives doesn't mean you sympathize with them. Oh, right. When you yeah. when you include something, it's not endorsement. Right. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what I'm trying and to say. And people people do seem to have a really big problem with that. Like they're mm-hmm. like, Well, I like the movie, but the main character, la 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 and it's like, Yeah, you're not supposed to like yeah. I think that person. We, yeah. You're looking at it wrong. We're not supposed to sympathize with them. We're supposed to recognize ourselves in them and be horrified that we could potentially Yeah. <laughs> right be right. as evil but then the self-righteous thing is the response to that is well i would never i would never you be could. that and you know no, no i would never you know and it's like yeah sure i would never be the queen of auschwitz but in small ways what do you allow to happen around you yeah, yeah. I thought the and rifle thing was a good analogy for that like a, your rifle story was good i hadn't thought about that way the way you can become used to things you don't expect yeah. to yeah. I there's one more thing I want to mention. You sure. were saying um anything else we want to bring up about the movie. And um I just paid a lot of attention to um I I I, I keep I can only her Mrs. Haas because I forget her name. Hedwig. Hedwig, yeah. Just um paying attention to her and um all the things that she's doing to keep the house, all the domestic activities. And I said this to you at the beginning of the movie, but I, I can't stop thinking about um, trad wives. Um, okay, so like maybe if Can you, you don't explain have, what trad wives are well, for all those right, of us all not right. on TikTok? If you're um, a woman, if you're like a female and you're into like cooking and stuff on Instagram or TikTok, the algorithm will push you reels from trad wives and it's just um it's mostly women like looking to go back to a simple way of life um like just like baking our own bread and growing our own vegetables and like very natural and simple very like plain muted colors um and like there's nothing wrong with any of those things um having as many kids as you possibly can (laughs) but some of them now some of the content that is being pushed to me is a little more um like fascist <laughs> yeah like it's a slippery slope and, yeah. yeah yeah and it's like and it, it's not maybe you don't know about it but like the new york times is writing articles about some of these influencers um that are pushing this type of lifestyle right. and there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself but it just made me think about um like just things i've learned recently about germany at the beginning, like back in the thirties, they started to push these ideas as well. Um, like just like very like simple life and going back to basics and, and Hedwig and Rudolph were talking about as well, at that, about that as well. And she was talking about how they wanted to move East and have a farm and just this wholesome life. And, um, I, I think that that, that's just like the the other side of the coin. It's it's all very innocent and it's even good, but um, they um, I don't know. It's it, it's like it's the women that are promoting it and just kind of like ignoring the 
bad ideas right. on the other side of it. Right. That's what's scary is like it's such a gradual yeah. thing that and even like with that experience on TikTok, it's like we're all just like the frogs in the boiling water or whatever. Like right. they're right. just slowly increasing the heat on everything. And yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, that's kind of what the whole movie is. It's like yeah. it's sometimes it's too late before you realize what's gone on. But yeah, there it's like you said like early 1930s and stuff that's said nowadays by certain people is just like, if, if you have a brain, you know what they're doing. I feel like so. It's, right. It's, oh yeah. It's the same yeah. shit. It's yeah. Really frustrating well, and sad. When, when Hedwig is talking with her mom and her mom is talking about that Jewish woman, she says the Jewish woman that I used to work for. So it's not a far yeah. distant thing. Yeah. And so within a short amount of time, she went from working with this woman to wondering if she is on the other side of the wall. And yeah, like culture always goes back and forth like a pendulum. Yes. Between, you know, radicalism and conservatism. Yes. And when you link an activity to one of those things, you know, like I, I talked about working at a shooting range and there might be people listening to this who now have all these assumptions about me and my political beliefs because I worked <laughs> at a shooting range because, you know, that could be considered just a political act, just being around guns. Mm -hmm. Or like Jean Marie was saying, you know, you can't just be into baking bread and growing vegetables. It has to be attributed to a mindset and a way of thinking in a way of believing rewinding it's the like, clock yeah. yeah yeah yes yeah i i did pull a quote that i wanted to read before we uh finish uh it says after haas was arrested in 1946 he wrote that my family had it good in auschwitz every wish that my wife or my children had was fulfilled the children ran free and his wife had quote her flower paradise he was hanged to auschwitz in 1947 not far from where the family had lived. I think if you can bring some knowledge about the Holocaust and what happened to this family after, the movie becomes a part of a whole picture. And like you were saying with Under the Skin, Glazer does not hold your hand at all. And in this one... It, it requires a little bit on your part, but if you can get there, it's, uh, it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. it, it's yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a unique, unique film. And I, so. I told y'all before, but I don't know if I said it on this, but, uh, yeah, I, so the first time I saw the movie, I sat through the entire end credits with that horrifying music, uh, Michael Levi, yeah. Levi, I guess is his name, the composer. The second time, as soon as the credits start, I ran out of the theater. I was like, I don't want to sit through mm -hmm. these credits again because it's so upsetting. That music is just like a, mm -hmm. yeah, it really underlines the movie well. I would the the feeling of the movie is really, it's a really good score for that movie. The score is the main character, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I do. I think for a movie, which we know are motion pictures, you have to listen. You have to listen. You have to be paying attention and hearing everything and sometimes you're hearing tiny little things and sometimes you're hearing like ocean waves of evil whether it be in the score or in the screaming or whatever but um it's definitely a movie that uh should be viewed with subtitles even if you speak german and should be listened to very loudly definitely well hey thanks guys Thanks. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Scott. Fun. Yeah. Jean Marie, where can people find you online? I mean, you can find me, but there's not much you're going to get out of it. <laughs> um, what is my Twitter handle? Jean Marie Vargas. That is my Twitter, Jean Marie Vargas. Um, you can find me there. You can request to follow me on Instagram. Maybe I'll prove it. <laughs> Scott, what about you? Where can people find you online? Um, I'm on Twitter or X, whatever. Uh, it's at Cole, comma, Scott, which is all spelled out. My last name, the word comma, and Scott. Um, and that's just for like random movie thoughts and classic Simpsons gifts. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, yes. What I, that's what I'm good for. Uh, 
Uh, same thing on Instagram. Yeah, at Cole, comma, Scott. That's me. And then uh, some of my past writings are at uh, a website here in Nashville called Music City Drive-In. Those are uh, that's film criticism that I've written. So check that out too if you get time. Scott's a super cool dude, and I have said in the past, and I think I stand by it, of all of the film people that I know, Scott is a top three when it comes to taste. Oh, mm. that's nice. So if, so if Scott likes something or dislikes something, and I say that, <laughs> and then I'm about to say what I'm about to say, there's a good chance that I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when I say taste, I mean it just uh, We're aligns both at the top. my taste. We're both up yeah. at the top. Yeah, that's good. Well, thank you. Very, I appreciate the compliment. That's nice. Of course. Very few people are like, oh, that guy's got great taste. He disagrees with everything I say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, thank you very much. Thanks, guys, for joining. Thank you thank for you. listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the show. You can send us an email. We would love to hear your thoughts on the zone of interest, especially. Please, if you have seen it, Andy, if you have listened to this, moviefriendspodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, thank you for listening. Have a good one. Movie Friends is produced by Seth Vargas and Michelle Rubenstein. Music by Anthony Picora. If you like the show, please subscribe and give us a rating. It really helps us find new friends. Thanks.